So for those of you who have taken any of video financial modeling tutorials, you'll recognize this. It's a type of corkscrew account. Those of you who haven't, it doesn't matter. All you've got to know is the principles behind once we go through this. So what we're going to do is at the start, we know that we're going to have a number, a amount of debt that we're going to draw down for the acquisition of this toll road. So I'm going to highlight that one in grey. I know we've got to fill it in. I know it comes in on the 31st of December and we have to pay it down during the next 10 years. So the opening balance on the 1st of January 2012 is going to be the closing balance on the 31st of December 2011. So if we make those two equal, that should be all right. The closing balance of the facility is simply going to be the opening balance minus any principal repayments in this instance. Now there's no accrued interest or uh, capitalized interest in this case, so there's no problem there. So let's go Alt equals, yep, yeah, to sum up, and then let's select those, drag them out, or control right. Okay, so we've got nothing in there at the moment. We've simply set it up so that once we've got a number here, and that number is going to be actually, we can put that in equal to this one here, back at our assumptions, our total debt. So enter. So as soon as a number, we put a number in here, 500, then look what happens. And we've got 500 coming through our account. Okay, so I'm just going to delete that one for the moment. I'm going to put it to zero. And that's going to be red as well. Okay, so we've also got, I'm just going to tidy this up a tiny bit. Okay, we've also got the interest expense. The debt service, okay, so the debt service will simply be the interest expense plus the principal payment. So let's just copy and paste these ones. And we've also now, I'll talk a bit about this one in a second, but let's just type it out for the moment. We've got a credit foncier repayment profile. Okay, and that is going to be the same thing as that. Okay, so now we know our interest expense. We know that our yearly interest rate is 7.5%. I'm going to keep this very simple. I know that the first year is a leap year, so there's going to be one extra day of interest, but we're going to keep it simple. So all we're going to do, multiply the opening balance times the interest rate. So go grab the interest rate, use your mouse if you'd like, select that and let's push enter. I'm going to make that a negative number as well and we can go like that across. Okay, okay so let's look at this credit foncier repayment profile. Now this is the principal repayment that you see in this corkscrew account. So let's go and call it principal repayment as well. Now let's go equals PPMT open bracket. We're going to go up to the function, insert function. So now the rate, we know the rate. So the rate is the interest rate per period. For example, 6% divided by 4 for quarterly payments. Now we've got yearly payments, so we can go directly to the assumptions page and put in our interest rate. Okay, so the per is specifies the period and must be in the range of 1 to n per. Now n per is just going to be the term of our debt. So let's go and Okay, grab the counter. The next one we're going to look at, so let's go, that's all done, is the N per. Like we said, the N per is the term of our debt. 
So let's go and grab the term of our debt. And the present value is going to be the debt amount. So let's go grab the total debt amount, which is set to zero at the moment. And let's go OK. Now let's change this. So let's change it to 500,000. OK. And let's see what happens. So now what we're going to get is we're going to get a repayment profile. Now, you would have to do other things to this formula if the debt term didn't coincide with the end of the project. We're going to leave it simple for now, and I'm going to talk you through exactly what the Credit Foncier repayment profile is. Now, it's a fancy name. It's quite a simple concept. So let's firstly put in the principal repayment, enter, and I hope that this comes out to zero. Yes, it does. At the very end, it comes out to zero. So that line's done. That one's done. And that's all fine. Now, our debt service is going to be our interest expense plus our principal repayment. So we can go equals that plus that. OK, and let's copy that one across. So drag it out. And it's all good. Now, what do you notice about this line? Okay, obviously, this line stays constant throughout the life of the project. So the amount of debt we're paying back to the bank, whether it be in the form of interest or pay downs of principal, is constant. So this looks very familiar and it's basically like a home mortgage repayment where you pay a fixed amount per year or per month. Okay, so let's go on and let's start putting in some stuff up the very top. So let's go and let's put in annual total revenue. So now we're building up our cash flow statement. So like we said, this is like the fifth ingredient. This is one of the important ingredients that goes into a project finance model. Let's go total operating costs, capital expenses, and then we've got this new thing that's tax payable now, and now we have this concept that says cash flow available for debt service. Now. The video financial modeling team is going to be talking about this cash flow available for debt service uh, in some blog tutorials. So don't worry if you don't get it here, you can always catch up on the blog tutorials. But basically, what it is, is it's your, as it suggests, it's your cash flow available for debt service. So it's usually your revenue minus your expenses minus your tax and then some adjustments for working capital as well. But this is the amount that's available for the financiers, firstly for debt or senior instruments, and then secondly for equity or shareholder loans or something like that. So that's the cash flow available for debt service. So we have an interest expense related to that debt service, and we have a principal repayment. Okay, and we have a cash flow now, as you may have guessed, available for equity. Well, let's go, let's assume that we can distribute everything and let's go cash flow distributed to equity. Okay. And let's go and grab the total revenue lines. So let's go equals car revenue. So that plus that will give us the total revenue line. Our operating expenses, we can go and grab. There we go. Our capital expenses, we can go and grab. Now, our tax, we can't at the moment. We're going to put that in a second. Let's copy these ones across for the moment. So use your mouse if you'd like. 
and let's sum those up. Okay, so we know we still have to do tax, but we've summed up the cash flow available for debt service. So we're going to call this CFADS and we're going to name it. So let's go Shift Spacebar and Control F3, Alt N, Enter, and that should be named now. Yes, it is. Let's grab this interest expense for the debt. So let's go interest expense and let's go and find the principal repayment. Okay, now we're going to go equals sum open bracket comma. So select that CFADS comma and those ones. So select those two as well. Okay, so that's our cash flow distributed to equity and then we can copy those across and push enter. So now we know that our debt value, the very start, let's start just formatting this slight, ever so slightly. Okay, and we know that our debt value, we know it's simply going to be equal to and the debt amount. Now, we're not saying that 500,000 or the 500 million rather is the debt amount. We're just putting a placeholder for the moment. We can go enter and we know that the equity value is going to be so equals equals XMPV bracket. We know our hurdle rate, so we can go and grab our equity rate, comma, and then we can grab our values. Now we want it valued from the 31st of December 2011, so we're going to grab these ones. I'm going to take out that calculations there. And then we know the dates are there as well. So once again, you can take out the calculation and then put enter. Now we're going to have to put a, a zero here and we'll just put it in red. Now you can copy these formulas all the way across if you'd like. Um, either or, that's fine. So now we've got an equity value. So now we've got a total acquisition value. Now some of you right now might be saying, whoa, 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 you're going way too fast. I'm not getting all of this. That's fine. We're going to talk quickly about this equity value here. So all we're saying at the moment is we're saying, okay, we're going to come in, we're going to buy this asset. We're going to put some debt in. We don't know what that debt amount is yet, so we've put a plug figure in. We're going to put some equity in also. And on that equity, we want a return of 13%. So if we put in equity of 176 million or 176.5 million, we're going to get that 13% return. That's all that equity value is saying. Okay? But before that, obviously we need to fill in the tax. So let's go grab our revenues. Now, when I'm filling in things related to tax or something like that or referring to a total revenue where I've got a total revenue up in the uh, 